We all have those movies that go from being a random name on a marquee to being in our top 10 list. We all know a time when a story stopped being just a story and became part of ours. This is one of mine. This story involves The Grove, a Red Beret, and Andy Serkis. This is the story of how I came to find, love, and recommend far too often Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So let's wind the clocks back to summer 2014. <laughs> Young Keegan, about yay high, is attending the New York Film Academy summer program. This program is an incredible program where you go and meet plenty of other high school kids from all around the country and internationally, around the world. You all get put into a couple of studio apartments in Burbank and you go and learn how to be filmmakers over the course of how many weeks. I did a four week program and that was just incredible. It's one of the things that really helped me realize who I was as a creator, I could not recommend their program highly enough. So if you are a future filmmaker out there like me who's trying to go into this, I highly recommend it if you're in high school. I think that it's a great program to get started on and I think you get to also just meet a lot of fellow kids that <laughs> want to do what you want to do. So tangent aside, young Keegan is about 16 learning what films he wants to make, learning what stories he wants to tell and be a part of, and what his voice is. Captain America the Winter Soldier had come out earlier, and Guardians of the Galaxy was on its way, and yes, by the way, these are all real photos. Yeah, I was still discovering a sense of style. I wasn't always the fashionista that you see before you, so you gotta start somewhere, am I right? One weekend, we were given the chance to go to The Grove, a famous shopping center in California, it was gonna be sort of a field trip thing during the weekend. And what happened was, some of us decided we wanted to go see a movie. And there was a group that was very adamant on seeing Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And I was not a member of this group. However, most of my friends were. So I watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes the night before and was blown away by that movie. I thought it was great. And now, uh, that would reason that I would like this movie too, right? But I wasn't sure. You know, sequels can be dicey, you never know. I thought that the story was great, but where are they going to go from here? And then we get into the theater. We sit down, and the opening plays. And you get that shot of Caesar's eyes. And it's that slow tracking shot out. And it just sets the tone for what I think is one of the more underrated action films in the last 10 years. Now, I'm not going to go into too much plot, mainly because I want you guys to be able to see it for yourselves if you haven't, and that's not what this is about. I want to tell you with these stories why I still think about this film to this day. Why that film somehow left a mark on me. And I think it's because what that film essentially is about is about this undeniable conflict that is about to happen. The apes think that humans are gone, that they burned themselves out, and so they form their own society that's based purely around brotherhood and all of that. Then they meet. And they both realize that they're not gone and the world can never be the same. It's this one event that happened that they both can't forget that it happened. And the rest of the movie becomes this allegory for communication and the underlying biases that we all have and how when we are led by fear how those biases can lead to destruction and i think that it was one of the first times i had seen a more blockbustery film actually have something that 
deep as its core message and the fact that so much effort was put on scene work and so much thought into character even if some of the characters like some of the human characters people have argued that oh they're kind of lazily drawn or things like that but the, to me i'm they're not they are complex not as complex as the apes which is i think the the funniest thing about the whole thing is you feel more for the apes than the humans but i think at least in dawn you really do feel for both groups in caesar i think that it's one of the most complex characters i've seen in forever and i think that right next to that is koba koba being the villain of, of the film is one of my favorite villains ever i think that one of the scenes that i just, I just can never forget is koba looking at caesar and caesar you know says like you let humans do their work and that'll be it like kind of let the humans do their work and they'll be gone and then koba just looks and does the points to his scars and just goes human work and it's 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 just how it's done how it's directed how these actors shine through the special effects that are used to capture these performances and Andy Serkis once again proving that motion capture is it's basically the same as sitting in the makeup chair it's just you're going to give different awards to, to different things and I think just what I loved about it was it felt to me like this was a world that was thought through this was a story that had a lot to say and that movies can be made like that that not every blockbuster has to be generic that they can be nuanced and they can be compelling and i don't know i just i think that as time has gone on the the fact that what matt reeves did with that movie and what he subsequently did in war was tell some stories that leave you thinking and leave you with a sense of change and a desire to look at it and wanting to wanting more for the world for society even if it's about you know <laughs> you know something as ridiculous as a bunch of apes on horses i just i i, I that worked for me and it's one of the most human stories that i've seen in a long time and I understand how ridiculous that sounds, and it may not work for you. This, it may be too hard to look at some apes. I mean, no, I know my wife hates these movies. For those who are able to get past that and are able to see what this story is, you really understand the nuanced allegory it's trying to tell you. And I think that it's one of those films that I think everybody should see. I think everybody should take a look at this. It may not be for everyone, but I think that for those who will like it, I think they'll get even more excited about the Batman first off because they'll see what kind of a filmmaker is behind it, a person that cares about character. Care if you listen to him even talk for a minute about making this movie, he was always thinking about what's the core emotion of every scene? What is what is a character's motivation? What is all this? And that's not stuff you always hear from blockbusters. They just don't have the heart that this one did. And the fact that it felt so real and so visceral. I walked out of that theater and I just, I, I was just blown away. I just could not believe what I watched. And after that, I think it really defined that what films I want to make are possible, whether it's apocalyptic stories or sci-fi stories and have it have a human core. And that maybe someday, if I don my red beret, maybe I can make that too. That someday, maybe I can I can have something as powerful as that to say. Now there's a YouTube channel I really want to plug because they, they'll tell you all about how these three films were made, all of the Planet of the Apes films, and that is called Story Street. Some of my favorite YouTube videos I've ever watched are these Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Rise, War, 
he documents all of them and tells you why he loves them. You learn so much about what went into these films and how they truly are a triumph and how they were a labor of love, every single one of them. That led me to where I am now. It was one of the many films that have and they're a part of my story. And I'm trying to find a, right, right now I am calling this segment uh, Films from the List. No, you didn't, but your point, yeah, it still stands. As you all know, that's a terrible title. So if you guys can help me out and tell me what this segment should be called, but I really want to go through films that mean a lot to me and tell you guys a little bit about the story of when I saw it and why it means a lot to me. Even if these are films that have come out a long time ago or they are just relatively new ones i just want to do something different with this so if you guys want to tell me what you think please give me your thoughts put it in the comments below so while you're doing that let me give you some random pairings for this film now if you like dawn of the planet of the apes because of the complexity of the story that it's telling and the morals involved and as well as the just allegory for humanity i think you should watch arrival if we're talking about one of the best science fiction films, or at least my favorite science fiction film in the past past couple of years, Arrival has to be it. And that deserves its own video, by the way, and you will probably get it, but Arrival is one of those films that just blew me away when I watched it the first time, and I think that it's thoughtful, it's important, it's entertaining as hell, and it's just, it's one of the films that made me. Now that's a proper introduction. Another pairing I have is Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. This was the film that he won Best Picture for, as well as Best Director. I mean, it's a classic in Westerns. But what I love about Unforgiven is it has something to say about the concept of Westerns and how we glorify killers sometimes. And it talks about all of the violence. And it doesn't just take that for granted. It talks about what that, me what that means and what that does to a person and the effect that that has. Finally, now some of you may know this channel from its early roots. Uh, we started this during COVID and it was basically a way for us to start promoting our upcoming filmmakers works. And I wanted to try to combine that with what we do now with doing these movie reviews and basically saying, if you like this, you'll probably like this film as well. Now, while we do not have many apocalypse films on our channel, one of the films I think you should definitely check out is called Meathead. Created by a person named Ben Ashby. He, if you again, have watched the channel for any amount of time, Ashby was one of our hosts for a very long time. He's a good friend of mine. It's more of a comedic take on the apocalypse genre, but nonetheless, it's, it's still poignant. I think that what Ashby does talking about a vegan in the apocalypse is nothing short of hilarious as well as just expertly well told. So give that a look, give him a follow on Instagram, and uh, we can all talk about how he looks a little bit like Kylo Ren. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit different for what we do, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know down in the comments. I know a lot of you guys have been sending some awesome comments, so I really want to respond to you and I really want to talk with you and tell me what else I should make videos for. I know that people have suggested Whiplash, Soul, and a couple of other films. There were a couple Brazilian films that I'm gonna take a look at next. And just thank you guys so much for talking with me on the Tick Tick Boom video or all these other videos. I love talking with you guys about this stuff. That's why I started this in the first place. So please check out uh, the various content we have on this channel. Check out some of the people that we've talked about. Just follow us on social media. You can follow us at Random Stuff Ent on Instagram or at Keegan Luther on Instagram, as well as at Movie underscore Man underscore Opinions on TikTok. I'm working on getting back on there. So just uh, give me a follow, give me a look, and thank you guys so much for this. And hey, let's watch something together. And remember, apes together, strong. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe and uh, check out some of these um, totally not randomly chose videos. I mean, I think you'll like that one. I don't know, just right there.